Well, here we are again, uh, making another guitar. This is uh, it's basically number four, I think. Uh, what we're going to cover on this one is uh, well, basically everything, I guess. Uh, you know, fenders are a, a sort of bulk together thing often. And this one's no exception. The only thing is with this one, I've found really the best parts that I could get my hands on. Other than going back to 1960s bits and things like that. Uh, well, I think there's no point in that. Uh, you just end up with something that's noisy and very, very expensive. So I did the next best thing. Bought a decent neck, bought a decent body. Had some right trouble with some of the suppliers on the way and uh, I'll name and shame them. <laughs> I have no problems whatsoever. Uh, some of them didn't even reply uh, to the problems. We'll get to that. So uh, I think we'll start. Let's take a look at the neck and the uh, you know the string thingies and all that stuff. Uh, my little fender fetishists. <laughs> Here we go. Well, first off, we can uh, talk about the fender neck. Uh, this is Jeff Beck neck uh, that I got off eBay from. Uh, uh, one of the Stratters, something other people who strip guitars down and uh, sell them. Uh, if you look at this one, it's got the roller nut in the top. It did come with some uh, tuners, but I've got different ones. It's a 22 fret neck. It's a very nice neck. Just turn it over and take a look at the back. It says on it's a bit neck. If you look careful with that, you can see that. What I did with this one is to find the self uh, locking, or well not self locking, locking tuners uh, similar to what's on the Jeff Beck neck except these ones are gold I'll take a quick look at them you can see what I mean the real deal ok well these things comprise of a nut, a washer two holes where you're going to fit in the back of the neck can't really get it wrong, screw them in, away you go. Uh, and I did check the height on these, uh, but on these particular ones I have, they're all the same height, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter where you put them, does it? So let's just fit that. It's really as difficult as that. Put this on the top, slither that in. Screw it up. Quick turn or two with the spanner. Make it tight enough, don't over tighten it, it's nice. And then we just fit the rest. Back in a minute. Yeah, that's right, it was that quick to do. Snap of your fingers. Take a look at that. If you look carefully, uh, you'll see they all look pretty much the same height to me down here. But there are some that you can get where three of them are higher and three of them are lower. When you buy some of these, just make sure you get the right sort and put them in the right places and all that stuff. These ones don't matter, but they do look good, don't they? Now looking at this neck, you can see we've got a roller nut. Uh, this one's in uh, steel by the look of it. I don't think they make them in gold, and even if they do, I couldn't be asked. So, <laughs> there you have it. Uh, like I said, Fender Jeff Beck neck. What can you say, really? There it is. Right way round. Uh, what else we got with it? Well, we've got an adjuster at the top uh, for the neck adjustment later. We've got a neck here that's slightly different than the body because anybody who knows what a Jeff Beck guitar is like, uh, particularly out of the neck mounts, it mounts with one screw lower and there's a cutaway on the body, which uh, takes me nicely to the uh, next bit because I'm just going to leave this in a minute. I'll just show you one last thing and, and the one last thing is that you can see that it's actually 22 frets and yes it overhangs and anybody who watched my uh, previous video would know that this was different on the guitar that I did previously. This one is exactly correct for the body. So uh, that's good fun. It saves a lot of time to have things right. And it can be almost a bolt on. What we'll have to do is just do one more drill leave that. I'll just probably fill it out with matchsticks or something, I don't know. Now when I set out to make this guitar, I set out to make it as one of the best strats I've ever built. Uh, no expense spared, everything exactly as I wanted it. And I looked to a company uh, called Warmoth for the body. 
But this isn't an off-the-shelf body. You know, they, they make plenty of bodies that you can just go there, they're refinished, or sorry, they're finished, and uh, you can just go and buy one. This one, on the other hand, uh, was completely developed by me. I chose the wood for the top. I chose the type of wood for underneath. I chose the uh, pickup styles, the this, the that, the, the other. Well, let's take a quick look at what we've got. One of the things you got is this neck cutout actually is uh, lower in the guitar than the regular Fender one. And that has an effect when you get the neck. Let's just bring the neck round a bit. Of actually sinking that neck lower down in the guitar. And the reason for that is because this doesn't have a scratch plate, you want the end of this neck being really near enough flush with the body. Not with a big gap underneath. Uh, that would look a bit unsightly. You know, if you're going to make something uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, you ought to do a proper job of it. That's, at least that's the way I think. So I had this machine down to seven, what they call 720 neck. This body's number 386. The other thing I did uh, was to have it rear rooted. And if we look at the body, I'll just flip it up a bit. You can see quite easily that there's a rear root in there. And that rear root uh, enables you to have all that nice wood on the front showing, which is very nice, really, just for something like this. And I did another trick uh, where the neck mounts. And I'll just bring that round. And you can see, if you look carefully there, that this is actually tapered. And it's tapered in so that you've got less wood in the way of where you're going to play. Nice all round. I guess. Well, at least it would be. Of course, you don't know all the story, do you? I do. And one of the problems with this body, as you see it right now, let me just see if I can find these other bits while we're talking. Yeah, one of the problems was, in fact, that this isn't the way I wanted the thing designed. And Warner totally and completely ignored my instructions. <laughs> what about that? Hey, now, what's really bad about that is that this particular body, believe it or not, if you can read that, it cost $1,052.61. Right, well what's different? Well, I requested a battery box in here, just in this area here. Should I ever put pickups in there that were active? And the other thing I requested was that this was actually cut around just like a Jeff Beck body. If you have a look around, you'll see one. You'll know what I mean. Uh, I'm just struggling to find those uh, other bits and pieces. What a pity. Maybe there is somewhere. Uh, maybe they're not. Let's not worry. Anyway, the point is, that's incorrect. I went back. I confirmed with the sales director. And the sales director said, yeah, no problem, we can do all that. It's all going to be good. Well, guess what? It wasn't. Um, the worst part about all of it, I mean, the body itself that I've received, yes, the wrong specification to what I ordered, yes, it's excellent. The communication from Warmouth is awful. It's as bad as you get. Zero communication. In fact, I emailed them three times. I got one email back, but in the end, I had to phone them from the UK just to confirm that they received the emails. Uh, that's not good. And of course the other thing is, when it gets to England, uh, it's 20% on top of that figure that you uh, saw. So it's probably cost about £800 for this body. And a body that's not exactly what you want, especially when you told them before they built it. It's a little bit frustrating. Anyway, let's move on a bit further. You can also see on this body that, it, that, it, that, it, that it's hacked away a bit more in this area. Not the nice thing about it, well, the nice thing that I like is this uh, finish around here. It's like a natural, it's just been taped off basically and sprayed over. And then they pull the tape off and finish the body. Nice. PRS did it about 25 years ago, I think. And I'm sure that other people have done it before that. But of course, this doesn't cost the price of the PRS, does it? Even at that price, even at, at your £800 uh, for the body, or your, you know, $1,200 for the body. It doesn't cost what a PRS would cost 
uh, of similar uh, figuring. So uh, nice. Anyway, that's the body. I just wanted to talk about it a bit. Oh, one last thing. This body, I had it on the scales the other day, 3.1 pounds. It's not a hollow body. Uh, what uh, Warmoth sometimes do is hollow out behind this plate, behind this, and make the, the body lighter. Uh, one of the things I did request was a, a, a lighter piece of wood. And that's what I got. Uh, it's basically maple on what they call swamp ash. <laughs> swamp ash ever, ever actually exists. It's just a, it's just a phrase people use. So it's, a, it's maple on ash. And uh, as I said, 3.1 pounds. It's going to make the guitar sing. Now you can see on this guitar that I actually had the uh, tremolo uh, drilled for a regular uh, six hole uh, fender type of out. fender type of thing. See? It's good, but it's not the one we're going to use. <laughs> We got a different one we're going to use, and uh, I don't have it here yet. I'm waiting for that to arrive, but uh, no doubt it will. And uh, it will in due course, I guess. We shall see. So that's one aspect. Another aspect that's going to be fitted in here. Are these things. Some people will know about them. Some won't. They're supposed to be the nearest thing to. Uh, sort of 54-ish pickups that you can get. Uh, these are the uh, higher output ones, so they'll be more like Texas, I guess. But they, they look the job, that's the point as well. You don't want to do things by halves. So we've got this new bridge, we've got the, uh, the right pickups, we've got the right neck, we've got a bit of work to do on the back. As I said, if you check my other video, what we did was sort of seal off the areas uh, where we didn't want any home and on this guitar it's got to be in there this doesn't matter that does so we'll be doing that we'll be doing all the electrics what else uh, well we'll be doing the whole the whole damn thing and uh, I'm looking forward to it so let's move on okay now one of the things I did do was to uh, check the neck out before I really did anything uh, after the aggravation of the previous guitar I just thought I'd check the neck fit and see if it would go in the hole and things like that and anybody who knows anything about strats, you know, you don't take the neck and slither it in this way. That doesn't work. What you have to do is put it in at the end and then press down. And the thing about this one, I'm just going to push it in there. If you actually look at this, you'll find that it just slots absolutely in there. Perfect. And that's without any real work. Well, actually, I didn't do any work to make that fit. You can see what I was talking about. This is much lower uh, to the body. And uh, basically, it fits. Nothing to do. I've got to drill one hole, remember, because the, it's a different style of neck mount than the others. But Well, the other three holes will fit perfect. So uh, let's slither that back out for now. I'll come back to that later. Well, at this point, basically, what we want to do is we want to use uh, some of my favourite stuff, and that's uh, that's this stuff. You ever seen it before? It's like a it's a tape that uh, basically has uh, a glue that can uh, conduct electricity or conduct uh, between the glue. Let's put it that way. So when I fill this cavity out down here with this tape, what you'll have is a uh, basically. Uh, three quarters of a thing called a Faraday box. Faraday cage actually, I think they call it. And the last little bit to that will be this thing here. And what I'll do with that is put some on this and then we'll fit that in there. And that will seal off uh, the uh, controls so that we don't get hum in that area. I'm also going to have to do that to the pickup area uh, on the other side, but what we'll do is we'll do this first. I'll just put the stuff in, you just stick it on anywhere basically if you check my other videos out too you'll see what I mean but basically we stick it on all over overlap it, get it all as nice as it should be and then uh, basically we move on just thought I'd keep you guys up to speed you can see that uh, it's sort of semi fitted at the moment it just goes around, you just rub it all in all over fill all the holes in, doesn't matter just make sure they actually cover 
round this edge not by a lot just by a little bit but just make sure you get it enough so that when you fit that plate you get contact between these two edges well between this edge and the one on the plate should I say okay I'll finish off and as you can see that's basically it uh, what we have to do now is cut the holes out all these little holes and uh, when you come to the uh, to this bit what you want to do is leave a bit of spare and then basically you fold that over just around this edge just so it touches the plate and there you go uh, although it doesn't actually come over the top you got to remember when you put these screws in they're going to go through that uh, so it's going to seal anyway so no real problem with this particular build okay and lastly you can see that the holes have been cut out all very nicely well, it won't be too long before we've got that bit of a boring thing out of the way we've got a bit of tape left on here just to finish that off and it goes into there into there and into there no big job you just do it where you go oh and don't forget uh, on the back here something I forgot to mention uh, don't forget to re-put the holes in for what the uh, you know for the wires there's one there it goes through there and into there and there's, there's some of the the sort of pickups and so on and so forth if your strats are different than this go and have a look at the other one I built because that shows you the other way of doing things okay guys and as you can see there I've got the finished thing I didn't bring these over the top because there's not really any massive point in doing that really just to protect them a bit uh, I've been on it about an hour and a half now in total uh, but the thing is I had to sort of go to work to get some more tape because I ran out fancy that and there's a finished plate uh, after I put the, the sort of copper on. Okay, well, moving on a bit, uh, what we've got here is uh, the basic tone and volume pots and things like that, switches and bits and pieces. We've got some uh, very nice wire there, just like the old stuff. Bit of a decent capacitor. That's a 47. God knows what the other one is. That's a 47, too. Can't see that. And like I was telling you originally on the guitar, uh, I originally wanted to, to fit this neck plate, which is quite a decent and rare neck plate. Bought it for the right money, it's second hand, but it's great. And if you think about the body, which will swivel, swivel around to now, you'll see that uh, well, it's never going to fit, is it? So uh, thanks, Warmoth. I really appreciate that one. What I've got here is the uh, bottom end of the neck. Uh, remember, it's a Jeff Beck chobby, and a Jeff Beck strat has holes like this. But on the one I've got, thanks to Warmoth, the holes aren't like that. So, what I'm going to do is fill this hole out, uh, fit the neck uh, with these two bottom screws, and then drill this hole. Being careful not to drill straight through, and I'm in a nice hole somewhere there. That could look good, couldn't it? Then you could fill it out and have two markers. I don't know. <laughs> maybe so, maybe not. But, well, how do I fill the hole? Well, basically, I take all these giant matches and I sort of trim the end down nice and carefully until it fits the hole. And then I uh, use a bit of super glue and bang it in quick. And that's that. There it is pushed in the hole. Now it's just a matter of cutting it off. You can either snap it off or cut it off. Take your pick. A bit of tidying up and away you go. And there's the filled hole. As you can see, it's flush. All nice. Now on this uh, neck pocket, uh, like I said before, this has been taken deeper to 720 and also it's angled away here so what you'll find is that if you're using the uh, regular screws like these basically when you fit this it's going to come through the neck so what you have to do is cut these back so it doesn't come through the neck next question is always going to be uh, well how deep are these holes you know, how deep do I need to drill this fourth hole? Well, it's simple really. If you take uh, one of these, which I'm going to fit in my 
specially uh, picked up uh, drill, present where you'll see it. What you do is just put it in there. Okay, a bit of masking tape, which I've got down here. Let's get it out. Bit of masking tape and tear some off. Like so. And basically fit it around like that. It was all that round. And that's the depth you need to go to. No more, no less. I suspect if we tip this up. Fancy that. That's the depth. Okay, so you need the screwdriver, the plate, a couple of screws, don't want to be over tightening them on this neck. Uh, obviously the body and obviously the neck. So if we just fit that in place for now, we'll see how it's done. This one fits perfect, so uh, sometimes they don't. You're going to be finishing back here, maybe finishing back here a bit on this side. That should be fine for this. Well, it is. But if yours is wrong, like on my other guitar, check the other one. Uh, then you'll have to get this one flat. Or if it's the other way around, go look for another neck. Okay, now as you can see, I've just fitted these loosely for now. That one's going in, a, that one's actually cutting back and grinding back a bit. These two are going to as well. Uh, but for now, that's fine. And now we can drill that top hole. Uh, nice and easy, nice and straightforward. You've got a guide. And all the rest of it will mark it, take the neck back off, and then drill down as deep as we said. Easy as that. Okay, so this is the drill I'm going to use. It's really cool, just uh, fits in there, like so. I'm sure you can get some of the same. Works great. Just does the job. Just mark it. I need to mark it, centralise. could drill it all the way down but you can't see how deep so what we do is take the neck back off now there's the neck back off and there's the hole obviously we want to drill in as deep as we said uh, then we can move on with the neck you can see it's pretty much uh, where it should be <laughs> how easy just make sure that when you drill you drill straight if you drill at an angle it'll be funny And there you have it. That's the hole drilled. Well, the next obvious thing we've got to do is to measure how far we want the screw to stick through into the neck. And we can do that by, once again, fitting that bottom one and just hold the neck in place. And then we can mark the screws for the depths we need, just even from the outside over the plate. That's fine. And mark your screws, and then we grind the screws down so they're not going to come through the neck. It's as easy as that. Let's carry on. So there's the neck refitting. I just use one screw. No one get another get the other screws really. Hold on. And what we want to do is want a, a marker pen, and we want the screws. So let's put them there. So if I bring the guitar around now, you should be able to see. We just take a screw, how far in that's going to stick. You can see that will go straight through. So what we need to do is just mark it back with the marker pen. I need two hands just on them. Not so easy. Any marker pen will do. We just want to mark it back to about, I think about there. I can see the mark on that one, just about. Now, I'm not actually going to uh, do them screws today, 
Uh, I'll do those tomorrow when I go back to work and we'll just grind them down and I'll bring them back and we'll fit them on video. Uh, so let's talk about some other bits and pieces we're going we're gonna to be using uh, on this build. It's quite interesting and a little bit different. Oh, I'm just going to take the neck off for now because it's easier to work without the neck. Okay, one of the things I want to talk about are the pickups. Because uh, these are not, not any ordinary pickups for this guitar. I wanted to get something uh, a little bit authentic but with a bit more power. You can see that the holes we're going to use are absolutely, really, pretty much standard. They've been filled out with this copper, which we did earlier. And one of the things we're going to do with that by the way, is to use uh, some of this, particularly in these pickup surrounds, just to stop it so, uh, from, uh, you know, shorting out with the pickups, because when you see the pickups, you'll see what I mean. So we've got some holes that take the wires through. We want to fit the pickups. We want to fit these uh, connections. And of course, when we fit the pickups, we've got a number of options here. We can either drill them into the body, which I don't really want to do, or we can do something else, and uh, now we're going to cover what the something else is.